What's going on, YouTube family? Welcome back to YGO Podcast. Thank you guys for coming back again. And um, thank you guys for all the new people that are coming to the channel. Welcome. We're currently sitting at 205 subs uh, from the last video. Um, please, if you're new to the channel, check out any other videos. Like, comment, subscribe. I usually comment. Um, I read all the comments. And if you have any recommendations, please leave them down in the comments below. Um, as you can see today, we have Godi uh, for a deck profile today. So um, if you haven't known, Godi is actually one of those kind of rogue contender decks that uh, shows up every once in a while uh, within a regional top or um, at, a, at, a, at an event or at a locals top. It just seems like this deck, the Synchro Fish deck version of this, uh, which it's designed to be, uh, seems to be uh, a pretty good contender as far as going into the next meta um yeah so let's go ahead and get on with the profile guys uh like i said before please like comment subscribe uh let's try to hit 300 i want to try to hit 300 um this year and uh at least sometime this year and uh yeah let's go ahead and get to it all right so to start off the deck you're going to be running with three paces so you're going to be having three paces in the deck uh, paces is pretty much your initiator. This is your starter. Uh, so paces effect is that um, you can banish if when it's face up on the field, you can banish it to um, special summon a fish, one fish monster from your hand. Okay, so um, that's already a pretty good effect. It being a level two tuner water fish type um, has quite a bit of synergy, as you know, with totally awesome and with any other um, aqua types out there as well as sprite. Uh, when it's banished, it can come back during the next standby phase, and then uh, if it's during your opponent's main phase, you can activate an effect to where um, as soon as that effect resolves, you can synchro summon. So the card itself is fairly strong. Um, it's fairly strong, and it's also quite unique. So what I like about the card is that um, it, it enables a lot of synchro options on your opponent's turn. Okay? So... Uh, going on to the next is that you have one Zep Ruby of the Goatee, okay? And its effect is that you can banish this card from your hand, then target one fish monster in your graveyard, banish it. During your opponent's turn, if this card is banished, you can special summon it. This card, If this card is special summoned, except uh, during the damage step, immediately after this effect resolve, you can synchro summon one fish synchro monster using this card you control. You can only use effective Zep uh each uh, once per turn okay so zep just it kind of follows suit with the whole entire strategy of the deck which is essentially just facilitating extra synchro summons all right and then you're going to be running one shift fairy of the goatee all right and shift is going to facilitate the main the same thing okay and it's gonna this whole deck's theme is just essentially banishing fish monsters bringing them back during your opponent's standby phase and then synchro summoning for a big monster for a big boy goatee on your opponent's turn okay so shifts effect is also um, actually the stats of the card level two aqua fish type also a tuner okay its effect states that you can banish this card from your graveyard then target one fish you control it gains 500 attack till the end phase of this turn during the standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished, you can special summon this banished card during your opponent's main phase. If this card was special summoned this turn, you can quick effect immediately synchro summon one synchro fish monster. Okay, so you're kind of understanding what the concepts are um, around these cards. And then we're going to go ahead and get to our level six monster here. And it's going to be Snopios, the shade of the goatee. Uh, so... Snopio's effect say, states that during the main phase, quick effect, you can banish two fish monsters from your hand or graveyard to special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summon, you can target one card on the field, banish it when it leaves the field. If this card is banished, you can banish one fish monster from your graveyard, add this card to your hand. You can only use each effect of Snopios once per turn. So Snopios obviously uh, facilitates a little bit of extra pressure to your opponent because he can kind of recur himself quite a bit within the strategy and him being a 2100 attack point monster and then initiating uh kind of your your combos amongst 
your other goatee that may be in the grave, such as Paces, Zep, or Shif, um, he really he really enables um, and starts those things going. So we're going to go ahead and play three Lifeless Leaf Fish. So Lifeless Leaf Fish reminds me of kind of like your Digusto Emerald. It kind of reminds me of a Foolish Burial and Digusto Emerald um, because it says when it's summoned, you can send one fish monster from your deck to your graveyard except Lifeless Leaf Fish. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target three fish monsters in your graveyard, shuffle the monsters back in your deck, and then draw one card. Okay, so that's obviously, I mean, really good in my opinion. So uh, that's pretty much enough said on Lifeless Leaf Fish. You can kind of see how it can combo out. Okay, and then you're going to play three Abyss Shark. All right, now Abyss Shark uh, came out in Legendary Duelist, Duelist of the Deep, I believe. Uh, not too much of an open set. And the set itself, in general, was pretty lackluster, but this card was probably the most um, valuable card to have come out of that set. It's a level 5 fish monster, Aqua type, 1200 attack. Um, its effect is pretty sharp as well. It states that, that you can use this card for an XYZ summon of a number monster. All right? So let me go ahead and bring this a little bit closer, so that way I can see exactly what it says. And I want to make sure I give you guys the correct information, okay? It says that if this card is used for XYZ Summon of a Number Monster, it can be treated as a level 3 or 4. If all monsters you control are water, one minimum, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, add one level 3, 4, or 5 fish monster from your deck to your hand, except the Bish Shark. For the rest of this turn, you cannot special summon monsters except water monsters. Also, double first battle damage inflicted to your opponent this turn by your number monster battling another monster okay you can only use each effect once per turn so of course this card is obviously as you can tell um, it has so much versatility when it comes to uh, xyz summoning uh, that we do in the deck that it, it's pretty much insane also it can just pretty much level its level um, allows you to go into other synchro summons, as you'll see as we go along in uh, the deck profile. So you're going to be running three Butuniful Princess. Okay, so um, if you don't have your Butunifuls, please open up uh, packs of Majesty Maidens or Magnificent Maidens. All right, um, that pa that pack. These are not short printed at all. Um, and if you like, if you don't want to open up any of those packs. Please go online, buy your singles. These things are extremely cheap now. They're roughly about $14 a piece as a rare. They've got a reprint as an ultra rare. It's an excellent card. And here's what it states. Butuniful Princess is a level one water fish type monster, zero attack, zero defense. When this card is normal or special summon, you can banish this card. Uh, special summon one level four or lower fish type monster from your deck except Butuniful Princess. All right. So that makes a lot of sense in terms of what kind of deck we are it what kind of deck we're running here right and then you're going to run one silent angler and silent angler is um it's it's a great card and you're going to see this in any water strategy really besides marin sets level four fish type if you control a water monster you can special summon this card from your hand but you cannot special summon monsters from your hand for the rest of the turn all right so that's a uh, little bit of a drawback, but it doesn't stop you from special summoning any type of monsters out of the deck. And for all the water, fish type, goatee type, that's going to be it for those. So let's go ahead and move on to the next. So we're going to be running something a little bit different, okay? And I don't want you guys to, you know... Uh, rage too much about this but we're going to be running three uh supe dust walker and one supe and the reason why we're running this um and i picked up this idea from another deck profile i tested it out and it's actually a really great synchro strategy essentially what it, a supe does is that supe the dust walker so um the dust walker will you can discard one card special summon um this card from your hand and it is a level five monster, okay? And what it'll do is then it'll allow you to special summon one Supe from your deck, which is a uh, Earth Fiend Tuner, okay? So what that allows you to do is go into level sixes. And since your level six Synchro Fish is completely generic, okay, you can see, your level six Synchro Fish is completely generic, it allows you to go into those Synchro plays 
um, and to essentially get your combo started because Arian Post is the way that you can, if you're really lacking on anything, Arian Post can get your uh, play started as you'll see as I go uh, further into the profile. All right, and that does it for all the monsters that's in the deck. And then the next cards we're going to play is we're going to play three. And this card hasn't seen play, and this is what gives it play. This is we're going to play three Ready Fusion and then one Instant Fusion, okay? And those are just for our targets in our extra deck. And then we're going to play one called By the Grave, all right? So these cards will obviously um, be our extenders for the deck. Uh, ex with the exception of Call by the Grave. And now for our hand traps. All right, for our hand traps, we're going to be playing three Dimension Shifter. Uh, for obvious reasons, Godi can, most of your combos facilitate around banished cards or cards being banished. Then um, you're going to be playing three Magnumut and then three Druid Worm. Okay, so. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Hate to put that. <laughs> hate to put, have everything to have bestials in here. They're just so good this format. Uh, so until something happens, uh, we'll keep having to play them. They just provide so much pressure on the board and their effects to banish anything out of the graveyard. It really does help um, you play against other strategies. And for our last main deck cards, we're going to be playing some things. Okay, so we're going to be playing two goes and match. So this is going to be to really help um, lock out your opponent and kind of limit their plays. We're going to be playing two Summon Limit, okay? And then we're going to be playing two Macrocosmos. So I like to diversify my portfolio. Um, I don't like playing, you could play three and three or two, two and two of different kinds of strategy depending on whatever your play style is. But my preference is, is that the most oppressive cards that you can put on the board, especially in today's game, is Macrocosmos, Summon Limit, and Goes and Match. Those are the most common um, oppressive cards that you can place on the board and your opponent just kind of uh, starts shitting bricks. And that's the thing that you want them to do, okay? So those are my three, and that is gonna be it for the main deck. So let's go ahead and start on the extra deck, all right? So we're gonna be playing two, uh, we're gonna be playing two Godi of the Deep Beyond, all right? Godi of the Deep Beyond, let me go ahead and read its effect. So Godi of the Deep Beyond, it's a level 10, I believe. It's a level 10 water fish synchro type monster it requires one fish tuner and one or more non, or one plus non tuner uh, monsters. The original attack of this card becomes 500 times the number of banished monsters. If this card is synchro summoned during your opponent's turn, you can banish all cards on the field. During the standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished uh, from the monster zone, you can special summon this banished card. So just like with keeping in theme with the rest of the deck, this card is obviously your boss monster. You want to synchro summon this thing on your opponent's turn. You want to banish all cards on the field and you want to really um, put the hurting on your opponent, okay? Then you're gonna play one Golgem, um, Spear of the Goaty, and Golgem is not really used very often. Uh, you could possibly put something else in its place. Um, I believe it is a level, let's see, what level is this thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, level eight. Look guys, I can count. Can't read too well, but I can definitely count. Um, so it's going to be a level eight water fish synchro type monster that requires one fish tuner and one or more non-tuner types. And its effect states at the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish that monster. During your opponent's standby phase, you can banish this card. Then if the monsters used as material for this card synchro summon are all in your graveyard, you can special summon all of them, but banish them when they leave the field. Okay, so you get it. Right, uh, so if you're using goaty cards or goaty monsters to synchro summon into this, this allows you to banish them and kind of get them going again, all right? Um, I, I could see why people really wouldn't want to use it too much. I do think it works great as a um, kind of a, of, of a beater in my opinion. But anyway, moving on. So you're going to be running two Ascan, the Bicorn goaty. So this is probably... Um, the second best, I would say, hmm, I'd say this is probably the second best. I'd say um, Godia the Deep Beyond and Ascan, um, 
the Bicorn Goatee are probably vying for both the number two spots. So I would say I put them both at number two. Uh, Askans is a, um, he's another level eight Goatee monster, right? Another eight water fish synchro type monster, except he requires just one tuner and one or more non um tuner monster so he doesn't require a fish tuner it says if this card is synchro summon you can target one fish monster you control and one card your opponent controls banish them if this card is banished you can banish one fish monster from your graveyard special summon this card so as you can see he can bring himself back consistently and he works well when he's on the field with macro cosmos especially if you have um, material in your graveyard to continually banish him then you're going to be running two of your Arian posts, all right? Uh, Serpent of the Goaty, and it is a level five, I'm sorry, level six water synchro type monster that just requires one tutor, one non tuner type monsters. And it says if this card is synchro summon, you can banish one level six or lower fish monster from your deck. If this card is sent to the graveyard as synchro material, you can target one fish monster in your graveyard banish that target then you can add one fish monster with an equal or lower level from your deck to your hand you can only use each effect once per turn so as you can see this card itself if you can get this thing onto the field or the faster you can it will facilitate you really turboing out the rest of the deck all right so the the rest of the cards will be sort of um, self-explanatory. So you're going to be running one Xin Ying, all right? Self-explanatory just due to the fact that, um, you know, Chen Ying is a water type worm monster and also very hard for other decks to get over. You're going to be running one Stealth Kraken Spawn and then one Stealth Kraken. So this works extremely well with Gozen Match. As you know, like Stealth Kraken will change all monsters on the field to water. So um, when you use Gozen Match, it will really hurt your opponent, okay? And then um, you're gonna be running one Abyss Dweller, one Abyss Keeper, and then you're gonna be running one, um, what do they call this? What do they call this? They call her the White Lady, right? They call her the, uh, White Lady doesn't play any games, something like that. <laughs> but uh, you'll be running one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, okay? Then as far as your Ready Fusion targets, you'll be running one um, Alavan, the Essence of Vanity, and then you'll be running one Rare Fish. Okay, so that is going to be the Goatee deck profile. I hope it's helped. Um, I really do enjoy playing this deck. Um, I really do like the look of all the cards in this deck. I think that these things are pretty awesome, in my opinion. And um, if you guys want to give it a shot yourself, let me know how you play the deck. Let me know what you guys think of the deck profile. And please, um, if you're not a part of any of the social, you can find me on um, Facebook at YGOTCG Decks. And also you can find me on um, Twitter and you can find me on Instagram, okay? Uh, I look forward to seeing and hearing from you guys. Please uh, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe to the video, um, and get that algorithm up and going. Goal, next goal will be 300. Hey guys, um, this has been YGO Podcast. I really appreciate all the support as usual. I'll see you guys at the next conversation. Peace.